Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and this is Medicated Housewife DIY, where crafting and mental health can come together. Sort of. Sort of. I mean, crafting can definitely help improve your mental health and really who couldn't use a little help with that. So let's just go with that. Yeah. In today's video, we're gonna be making these beautiful faux geode candle holders. They're easy to customize to your personal taste and they're fun to create. So without further ado, let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. So today we are making some gorgeous faux geode candle holders and the items we're using are these square glass candle holders from Dollar Tree. Also some white chalk paint by Waverly and some colored crushed glass. And I got these at Hobby Lobby for about $3 each. They carry the crushed glass at Dollar Tree, but I could not find any in stock in my store. So I ordered it from Hobby Lobby. The first thing I did was use a light color marker to mark off the paint line on my candle holders. That's where I was going to begin the painting on them. My thought was to leave a corner of the glass clear, translucent, and the rest would be completely opaque. So I began painting the remainder of the glass with the white chalk paint. This was to ensure that the rest of the candle holder was covered and no light was going to shine through it. I repeated the process on the second candle holder and I ended up doing about two full coats of chalk paint on both and I found that that was really good coverage and achieved the goal I was, I was after. The next step was to take some of my chalk paint and mix it with a couple of drops of black acrylic paint to make a nice pale gray color. The goal was to get a similar color to what you would see on the outside of a rock, stone, or, or the outside of a geode for that matter. I also mixed in a pretty good amount of baking soda into the paint mixture. Um, I've seen a lot of people use the baking soda and paint before uh, to get a nice texture. It gives you like a nice rough, sandy, you know, kind of like a rock or a stone type of texture. And I find uh, that this really works. I've used it on a couple of other projects. So I didn't measure the baking soda. I really just eyeballed the amount. And uh, I just got it like the consistency of cake batter, I'm gonna say. And it went on nicely, really smooth. Um, the coverage is excellent. I mean, also I did have the chalk paint underneath, but it went on nice and it did dry to a pretty rough kind of sandy, texture. I did both of the candle holders. I did two coats, I think, on both. And that seemed to cover like really well. When the baking soda gray paint was completely dry, I liked the rough texture, although it may have felt and looked a little bit more like a cement uh, piece than a rock. I was still pretty happy with how it came out. The next step was to carry the rock look even further by making them look like they came out of the ground. And I did this with some ground coffee. Full disclosure, this is actually old espresso grounds that I found in the back of my cabinet. So I'm actually pretty happy it was put to good use. The idea with the coffee is to rub and press the grinds into the rock part of the candle holder until it looked a little dirty. The more you rub in, the more the dirt color stays in the little nooks and crannies of the rock texture. And I used a damp rag to wipe away some of the excess coffee after I was done rubbing it into the piece. The added plus is that the coffee makes them smell kind of nice too. The end result, um, as you can see, it's a pretty rocky, you know, uneven, dirty looking maybe texture, like something that you could find uh, in the ground. And I was pretty happy with how that part of the project turned out. The next step is to apply the crushed glass stones onto the clear part of the candle holders. And I picked up my colors for the first holder and decided on a turquoisey blue. Uh, I used some clear and a darker gray color glass that I had. 
Since I wanted to use the darkest color in the middle of the faux crystal, I started with the dark gray glass using some hot glue and I started placing the glass piece by piece along the edge of the clear glass. Doing it this way was definitely time consuming and you'll see as I move on to the other colors, I found that applying the glue first and then sprinkling the glass onto the glue in small handfuls like you're applying glitter was a much more time efficient way uh, to do this, but I didn't realize that until a little later on. The next colored crush, uh, crushed glass was the blue, and I started to glue the blue glass along the edge of the dark gray so that it would mimic the progression of colors that go from dark to light, the way that they would naturally be in a crystal geode. And as you're gluing, it's also good to keep building up your crystals on top of each other so that they start to jut out from the glass, um, almost like they're exploding, like out of the glass and that's that's sort of what a geode would look like is that it was a rock that exploded opened and all these crystals sort of like pushed their way out of the rock anyway that's how i saw it that that was my interpretation <laughs> i continued to build up uh with more of the blue crystals over each other and spread them out a little bit more as you can see and the last color i was using was the white crystal and what I did was I filled in basically all the clear glass space that was left between the blue and the gray paint. I filled all of that in with the white crystals. I even overlapped a little because I, I feel like when I go to line the crystals it, with a little overlap of crystal there and we're going to line right over it, it kind of gives it a more natural appearance. And that was what I was going for. In looking back on my color choices on this this blue geode, um, I wish I didn't use the dark gray in the middle. I, I do wish I had a darker blue to use, but I worked with what I had and that's what I ended up with. Once all your crushed glass is glued on and dried, um, it's time to line the crystal edge. And the first color I'm going to use with this is an acrylic gold metallic color because metallic seem to be what you would see in a geode lining it. And I made a thin line along the edge where the clear crystals meet the gray rock. And you can make this line as thick or thin as you want. I like to paint over some of the clear crystals in spots because I think it adds a little bit more texture and realism. And on this one, I, I didn't really end up liking that gold color. So I did repaint a second gold color and that seemed to work much better. We then used a white acrylic paint and we painted all along the gold edge with the white acrylic. The final color was black and I ended up using a Sharpie. It was very precise. And starting with the second candle holder, I decided that that one was going to be pink. So I started with my pale pink color crushed glass right down the middle corner there. And as you can see, at this point, I've stopped gluing individual pieces. Instead, I'm putting down glue and sprinkle some of the glass on top like it's glitter. It's just so much easier that way. The second color after the pink was this pale champagne color, like a pale yellow. It looks like it's clear in the video, but it really was more of a very, very pale yellow. And we followed that up with the clear crushed glass. And that was the third color we used. Now, because my main crystal color was pink for this candle holder, instead of using gold as my metallic edging, I decided to go with copper or a pink gold metallic acrylic paint. I just thought it looked a lot better with the pink. And I lined the entire edge where the crushed glass meets the gray rock texture with this copper metallic paint. I really ended up liking how that looked. I think that that worked really well. It was a good decision. So now the next edging color would be white, but I thought the plain white was a little stark. So I added a drop of red into my white acrylic paint and made the most subtlest, lightest pink shade that worked well. The final lining shade was black, and this time I used a much thinner permanent marker than the Sharpie that I used on the first one. And I think the thin line just looks a lot better. It's a little more realistic. I just, I really liked it. And now this is how this project turned out. 
I love, love, love these faux crystal geode candle holders. I think they're gorgeous. And even though I truly love the pink one better than the blue one, I still think they're both very impressive looking. This is a project that anyone can do and you can really make it your own with your choice of crystal colors and your paint choices. These geode candle holders are so high-end looking. They don't look homemade at all. They're really just beautiful. I really hope you enjoyed this DIY and if you'd like to see more DIYs and more crafting tutorials for stress, anxiety, and general mental health, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife, and crafting is my medication.